Good Tuesday morning, friends. Welcome to Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you're having a terrific Tuesday so yeah. far. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick is working hard for us over there in the Weather Center, though, because he's telling us all about this rain, how much it's going to impact yeah. us, and how long it's going to be sticking around. It's breezy, too. Yeah. yeah. I can almost hear it in the tone of your voice where it's just like another day of rainfall. That's the pattern we've had. It's been more often than not through this first week of November. Today, no exception out there. We've almost gotten our full month quota, our November quota of rainfall in just this first week. And it looks like the heaviest batch is just south of Spokane, where we see some of these darker green shades on Doppler radar, straight through areas like Rosalia uh, and others like, uh, I believe, St. John's. And uh, it, yeah, that would be the uh, area getting the most rainfall at the moment. It's a little bit more scattered around Spokane, Spokane Valley. Looks like some uh, more steady rain north of Coeur d'Alene to Rathrum Hayden getting some soaking rains for another straight day. But it is also windy. Look at these wind speeds already at 18 miles per hour. Wind gusts could be upwards of 30 miles per hour through the morning hours today. It's officially election day and Krem 2 is your home for complete election coverage. We are covering every angle of the important races that affect our community. So this morning, our Brandon T. Jones is joining us live from the Spokane County Elections Office. So Brandon, what should voters know this morning? Good morning, Tim Channing. Well, first thing that they should know is that there's 27 ballot drop off locations like the one right outside of the elections office here in Spokane. We've got all of those listed on our website. You can go over to crim.com if you are interested in finding the closest one to wherever you live. But another thing that's been exciting already this morning at 6 a.m. We've seen several cars come and drop off their ballots at this particular location. Looks like maybe we got one coming up here getting ready to drop something off as well right now. So the voters are up, they're out and early and getting their ballots dropped off. So it's an exciting day. You're going to have all day to go ahead and drop those ballots off. And I got a couple of reminders for you as well as you get those turned in. So by now, all voters should have gotten their ballots in the mail and all you need to do is fill it out and get it in a drop box or postmarked in the mail by 8 p.m. tonight. The deadline to register to vote online or by mail has already passed, but you can still register to vote anytime in person. That includes today on Election Day. If we can come back out here right now, you can see that people are getting those ballots dropped off and they're making it happy happen early in the morning. It's just that quick. You saw she just pulled up here got out of the car, dropped it in that quick. It's super simple. Make sure you go out there and you exercise your rights because it's just as easy as filling that ballot out and dropping it off. So we're going to have coverage for you all day on CRIM 2. We've got all of the updates that you need to know. You can also go to our website, CRIM.com. We're going to have it on all of our platforms, keeping you up to date over the next 48 hours or however long it takes to get everything count it and put in. But for right now, reporting live in Spokane County, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. Brandon, thank you for those reminders. People up early to cast their vote. Mm -hmm. Well, on the ballot for voters who live in the city of Spokane are two very important but very similarly named proposals. So Measure 1 will appear on the ballot for all Spokane County voters. While there is a, a Proposition 1, then that one will only appear for voters within the city of Spokane. So if Measure 1 is approved by voters, Spokane County residents would see a sales tax increase of 0.2%. A portion of the money collected would be used to build a new community correction center behind the current jail. They would also close Geiger Correction Center and expand the jail in downtown Spokane. Those who oppose this say that it would essentially be approving a blank check without a full plan on how to spend the money. So let's move on to Proposition 1, which will only appear on ballots for voters living in the city of Spokane. If voters approve Proposition 1, it would ban camping within 1,000 feet of parks, schools and daycares. The anti-camping initiative faced opposition from homeless advocates, saying it would only cause further harm to people experiencing homelessness. 
Among those casting their ballots this year are formerly incarcerated people who had their right to vote restored under a recent law. That law just took effect in January of 2022, automatically restoring the voting rights of people released from prison. Free the Vote Washington says more than 20,000 Washington voters had the right to vote restored, but the hard work isn't over for advocates who have spent nearly two years raising awareness about these restored rights. It's been slow going. This is something that uh, for for you know for a very long time people have uh, not believed that they had the right to vote. Um, you know when you sign when you sign pieces of paper when you're going into prison, it's very clear that you can't you know that you can't vote. Right now, there are no estimates on how many formerly incarcerated people have been registered to vote since the law passed. If you want more information about the races, candidates, propositions, or anything on the ballot in Spokane County, CREM2 has you covered. Just text the word vote to 509-448-2000 and we will text you a link to our comprehensive voters guide. There, you'll find everything you need to know before casting your ballot. Well, police and protesters came face to face at last night's Spokane City Council meeting as pro-Palestinian protesters shouted over council members, forcing the meeting to end abruptly. Crim 2's Kyle Simchuk shows us what happened. Spokane City Council members retreating to a back room as pro-Palestine protesters took control of the meeting. Cease fire now! Cease fire now! The group wants council members to reverse a resolution they passed unanimously last month, which condemned the violent acts of war perpetrated by Hamas and affirmed Israel's right to exist and defend itself. Before things got out of control, council members heard testimony from several pro-Palestine supporters during open forum. Whatever your feelings are, Hamas, the actions of the Israeli government in response are those of a settler colonial state seizing the opportunity to justify the eradication of an indigenous population. The resolution is racist. Entire lineages have been wiped off the face of the earth and still you sit silently, upholding the resolution to support Israel 100%. I am disgusted by you, I am embarrassed by you, and I am filled with shame over the fact that you refuse to feel shame for what you have done and what you have supported. Council President Lori Kinnear ended the meeting via Zoom Council members were not able to pass anything on tonight's agenda. One protester said the group plans to return to council chambers next Monday. In Spokane, Kyle Simcha, Krem 2 News. It is 6.08. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Happening today, the East Valley High School teacher suspected of trying to murder his ex-wife will be back in court. 41-year-old Benjamin Hill will be arraigned on his third set of charges for shooting at his ex-wife. Deputies say Hill shot at his ex-wife's house while she was inside during a drive-by shooting last year. Hill has been placed on administrative leave by the school district since his arrest back in May. He will be arraigned at 9 o'clock this morning where he will have the opportunity to enter a plea. Tracking tomorrow, the man accused of killing a family of four in Kellogg is expected back in court. Lawyers for 31-year-old Major John Kaler say he was not read his Miranda rights before he allegedly confessed to police. They want the court to throw out the confession entirely. Yesterday, the court was expected to hear arguments to dismiss some charges against him. Instead, his lawyers submitted written arguments to dismiss two of the first of the four first-degree murder charges he faces. Covering North Idaho, a new face now sits on the Idaho Supreme Court this morning. Governor Brad Little appointed District Judge Cynthia Meyer to the state's highest court. Meyer is replacing Justice John Stegner, who retired on October 31st. Before becoming a judge, Meyer worked as a lawyer in Coeur d'Alene and taught classes at North Idaho College. The Washington State University men's basketball team won this year's Battle of the Palouse. The Cougs beat the University of Idaho Vandals 84-59. Next, WSU will play the Prairie View A&M University this Friday in Pullman. U of I will take on Cal California State University Northridge tomorrow in Moscow. That is a look at your morning rush.
It's 610 and our weather forecast today features what else? More rainfall, but at least our temperatures are decently mild through these nighttime and morning hours. Still in the 40s for most of the inland northwest, just a handful of locations, just barely at 39 degrees. But that is why the precipitation is going to stay, of course, of the liquid variety. As we go hour by hour today, a lot of scattered showers. I don't think it will be a widespread rain or as much as we've seen with some events recently, but wet nonetheless, it will once again be. And with our storm system moving directly overhead, it's centered almost exactly over Okanagan County. That is going to create some decently windy conditions for locations along and south of I-90 today. So it is both rainy and windy for this Tuesday.